Okay. So you know this is my first time in Xavier, but coming here is not so difficult thanks to uh, navigational apps like Waze. So here you can find um, the route from one place to another and even choose the shortest path or the fastest one. Um, you can navigate the road and look at the traffic conditions um, and make the travel less stressful despite the traffic. So this is made possible uh, thanks to the global positioning system or GPS. So GPS is a, is a technology that is uh, developed four decades ago. But actually, it's a very good um, example of how a technology has an enormous impact eventually. So data from sat uh, signals from satellites are transmitted to uh, receivers or GPS receivers on Earth to give us precise location um, like the latitude, longitude, and um, altitude. So this information is, as we all know, is very useful, but um, it takes the imagination of entrepreneurs to actually take it to a level uh, that makes it more user-friendly and accessible in our handheld devices. So GPS is just one of the many satellites orbiting around the Earth. Um, much further than that are geosynchronous satellites, which actually gives us information like uh, weather. And now we use this data to make our weather forecast more accurate. Zooming in closer are low Earth orbiting satellites. Um, maybe you are more familiar with reconnaissance activity. You can see here your school as it um, changes for several years. But actually, these satellites can also give us um, information such as temperature, global temperature, and carbon dioxide, which are actually environmental parameters that are used as barometers in monitoring how our climate change and are useful for our policymakers in deciding or in planning for our future. So, how are these relevant for the Philippines? So, as we all know, the Philippines is composed of several islands. In fact, we have more than 7,600 islands. Um, we have one of the longest coastline in the world at 36,000 kilometers. And in 2015, we are now home to 100 million people. The Philippines is also a mega diverse country, uh, being home to more than 50,000 species of plants and animals, half of which are endemic. Given these rich natural resources, however, the Philippines is also largely threatened. So we are frequented by typhoons. On the average, 20 of them uh, goes through the country in a year. And as you know, the Philippines lie on the Pacific Ring of Fire. Um, just recently, um, Mayon Volcano is erupting. Maybe as we speak, it's still erupting. And um, also we had a number of earthquakes um, fairly recently. So all of these hazards make the Philippines the fourth uh, as the, uh, in, the, in the world as a country that is prone to disaster. How is satellite technology going to help us become more resilient to these disasters? So I'm showing here an example which makes use of data from satellite. Um, so these are temperature and vegetation anomaly data. With this, we are able to derive drought severity maps. Um, what you can see in the middle is the Philippines in 2015, and the color showing the intensity or the severity of drought um, that we felt. So in particular, you can see Mindanao uh, experiencing the worst drought during that year. And zooming in to Zamboanga, you can see that not all areas in the, in the province have felt the same level or degree of drought. So we can use this um, satellite information to have this um, observation at this extent. Imagine you're able to do this um, at a wide coverage, covering the whole country all at once. And you can do this like every month or maybe even every week. So it's a very useful for monitoring. Another example uh, um, that I think is more positive um, is using satellite 
for looking at our resources. So here in particular, um, the satellite data were used to, to estimate or, and predict fish abundance, particularly yellowfin tuna. So looking at chlorophyll, which is a proxy for plankton, uh, plankton distribution, which, is, uh, which drive the primary productivity in the ocean, and sea surface temperature, uh, we created maps that predicts the abundance of yellowfin tuna. So, to summarize, what are the benefits of Earth observation from space? So, maybe we are more familiar with observation made on the ground. So, you have a sensor or instrument, you go to one place and another uh, and take measurements. Sometimes you can set it up so it's automated and gives you continuous measurement. But these measurements are also somehow limited and are complemented with those taken from space. In particular, satellite observations are comprehensive. As I've already demonstrated earlier, you can cover wide uh, space, the whole country, maybe the entire world, and look at several environmental parameters at the same time. It is also consistent because it adheres to a certain standards so we have had satellite data for more than 50 years now, and this actually constitutes the climate da data records that uh, our policymakers use. And finally, it's reliable. So it's data that is accessible anytime we want it on places where we want to measure it. So with this, the Philippine government realizes the importance of satellite technology and embarked on a program to take advantage of this technology to address its need for Earth observation. Hence, the Phil Microsat program. Launched in 2014, the Phil Microsat program aims to build, develop, and launch the first Filipino satellite. So, in, together with that, we have data, of course, it will generate data, and process this data into information that can be used by the Filipinos. The milestone of the program is, of course, Diwata 1, the very first Philippine microsatellite. It's microsatellite because it's small. Uh, it's actually a 50 kilogram satellite. So it was launched almost two years ago um, from Cape Canaveral in Florida. And it was uh, inside the Cygnus spacecraft on board the Atlas rocket, so it was brought to the International Space Station. A little over a month later, the Wata One was uh, released from the ISS. So maybe this one can be animated. I'm not sure, but we should show you a dramatic video showing the Wata One uh, being deployed from the International Space Station. So since then. The Wata One has been going around uh, the Earth and taking images um, of the Philippines. Equipped with four cameras, um, so these are some of the images taken by the Wata One. So it can uh, capture images of clouds, of vegetation, of the coastal areas, among others. Okay, so this one should show how uh, the Wata One operates. So. Um, just imagine, okay, the satellite going through uh, Luzon, um, and it captures um, images as it goes through um, the islands. So actually, with this particular acquisition, we are able to take images of the Taal volcano. Okay. So these images are combined or stacked to come up with composites. Um, so from gray, uh, gray images, um, we can have a colored one like this, like what you can see here, wherein it's much easier to interpret what's in the image. Like you can see the houses, the roads, um, and the farmlands. So using this capability, the Wata One was able to capture images post-typhoon. So this one is actually five days after Typhoon Lawin hit uh, northern Luzon. So we can see the brown area are actually flooded areas. Okay? Um, and they're located near the river. And obviously, 
uh, the river has swollen, reaching the agricultural fields. We can estimate the area of the extent of flooding. More than the color composite, um, the Diwata one can also be used to look at something more profound. So this one takes uh, advantage of other uh, bands or other wavelengths, and we come up with something that is not so familiar perhaps, so it's called NDVI, or Normalized Difference Vegetation Index. So it tells us about the health or uh, the condition of the vegetation cover. So red or higher values corresponds to healthier or denser vegetation. So you can imagine how this can be used, say, for crop disease assessment or uh, for monitoring carbon sequestration. Another example is using the water one to look at water quality. So you can see your two pictures uh, from two different sites in Laguna de Bay. So one has a green colored water, the other one is uh, brown. So this actually shows that they have different uh, water quality or turbidity. But with the satellite image like the water one, we can have a map of the whole area, not just two points. And what you can see there, uh, the yellow and the green ones are more turbid waters than the blue colored area. So maybe it seems to you that the Wata one is on track on keeping its uh, goal of providing earth observation for the Philippines. But what I haven't mentioned to you yet is what I think is one of the greatest achievements of the field microsat program. So, okay. it's the expertise that was developed through the years. So, we started in 2014, so 15, 16, it was launched. So, just over one year time. So, we have involved several um, scientists, engineers, who painstakingly work towards the development of the satellite and in satisfying its objectives. So now we have, sorry, can go back? Okay. So now we have highly trained scientists and engineers who uh, who have worked several hours in the laboratory uh, building the satellite, testing its components, okay, and uh, eventually analyzing uh, data coming from it. And also uh, a bunch of students and researchers who go to the field to actually perform calibration and validation of the data that were obtained by the satellite. Finally, I think with this um, experience, we are actually developing a new culture among those who are involved in the satellite development and among our peers who are closely with us. So, first off, is data driven. Um, so, with satellite development, you have to be very precise. Every measurement counts. Just a millimeter or even a micrometer mistake can actually uh, make the satellite uh, stop or fall off, maybe. Okay. So, these are very crucial um, uh, measurements that needs to be uh, considered. Also, diligence. I, I think I've been repeatedly saying that it's a lot of hard work. It doesn't take a lot of brain activity. Earlier, uh, one of your colleagues uh, is telling me you have to be super genius to actually build one. But I will say everyone is capable. I think everyone has their genius, their own version of genius in them. But what's really needed is hard work and dedication and commitment. Um, it's harder, but it's actually something that everyone can actually work on. And finally, it's collaborative. So I think this is a very important um, uh, trait that uh, we're developed along the lines of uh, satellite development. So with embarking on such a big project, um, you need to work together. Teamwork is very important. As we know, um, we want to be competitive with BS school or high school student, um, you should be number one in class, try to be the best, that's fine. But here, you need to recognize that actually everyone is doing their best. And you need to 
uh, recognize the talents of your colleagues, respect them, and make them uh, contribute and give their um, efforts to put this um, project together. So with that, I would like to end with this. So if there's only one thing that uh, I want you to remember from this talk is this image. So this is the Wada one. It's a small box, square thing, small box, going around the earth. You can see parts of the earth underneath it, the vastness of the clouds um, and the land and oceans below it. So. I want to read it for you, uh, maybe I can go down here. So it reads, significant progress in the solutions of technical problems is frequently made not by a direct approach, but by first setting a goal of high challenge, which offers a strong motivation for innovative work, which fires the imagination and spurs men to expand their best efforts and which acts as a catalyst by including chains of other reactions. This is from Ethan Siegel, who is an astrophysicist and science writer. So just like my example of the GPS earlier, so it was a technology developed 40 years ago. Um, they just want to know where the location is. So they, did, they don't know then how it will evolve, how it will be used. So with the Wata one, um, we obviously satisfy our uh, objective of getting Earth observation images. But at the same time, we have trained a new breed of scientists and engineers. And what can they do in the future? Nobody knows. But definitely, it's something great for the Philippines. Thank you.